now. Okay, welcome. Um, we have a small group right now of artists that are going to be presenting um, their work on the current on the current um, pieces that they're working on. We have Randy Globus, we have Ann Schwartz, and we have Muffy Clark Gill and myself, Roberta Millman Eyed. I'd like to have each of the artists talk about themselves, what their position is in NAWA, or if they are uh, where they're you know, at when, where they're living and where, they, where their gallery is, where they're producing this artwork. And that would make it very interesting. So um, I'm gonna start, we'll just do it alphabetically, I guess. We'll start with Anne. So um, please present yourself, your name and um, your information and what you're working on currently. Okay, well, my name is Ann Schwartz. Uh, I live in Boynton Beach, Florida. I've been here for 25 years now, but uh, used to, uh, I grew up in South Beach in Miami Beach and then Fort Lauderdale, then moved up north to New Jersey near, uh, met my husband up in the Catskills. I'm a Catskill girl. And uh, we moved to New Jersey where we, you know, where I taught, uh, I was a teacher. And then um, when I had my children, couldn't get back into, uh, teaching again, uh, I went into real estate and I was in real estate for over 40 years. Uh, at the same time, doing my art, sculpting first, I was a sculptor in stone and exhibited and sold quite a number of pieces up north, but my husband's company moved down in 1997 and uh, I felt starting all over again is what happened when I moved to Florida. I joined women in the visual arts work myself up through the program uh, chairman to uh, exhibition chair, finally president for several years, but back to exhibition chair when I gave up the presidency for over 10 years. Um, and then basically uh, because of COVID, I moved my studio uh, indoors uh, into the house uh, because of lockdown situation. And I worked uh, on a, <clears throat> acrylic because it was easier to do inside the house without any um, turpentine smells and things like that. Uh, and so I worked into collage and that's what I have been doing for the last two and a half years, um, working on collage with sometimes with an acrylic background if I want. Uh, with little tiny magnifying scissors. Um, I mean, little tiny scissors under a magnifying lamp because I cut very, very small. And I recently uh, completed, uh, that's why I'm not working on something because I just got back from being away for a whole week, the first time ever in two and a half years since COVID, yet we took a, a little side trip across to the West Coast to see what's doing in St. Petersburg and Sarasota. But I don't know if you could see, I recently did, now see, I was afraid with the glass and the glare that I did tubing down the river because it was so hot. And so you can see the background has sky and water, but the people have been all cut out out of magazines. That's fun. Cut and wow. That's fun. That's a fun piece. <laughs> So that was tubing down the river. And the one I am really most proud of, because I worked on it for, oh my goodness, more than a year, um, is the one behind me. And I don't know if you can really get to see it, but it is very, very big. It's right. about 40 yeah. some odd in inches. If you that. tip it, you tip it forward or something, when once you line yeah, it up, tip it forward right. and you'll knock the glare out. So it's cool. It's cool. Oh, wow garden wow. scroll and so it's sort of I don't know if you can yes yes just keep it to wow. that so wow 40 some odd inches 41 inches wide and 20 inches high and it's a garden with waterfalls and people strolling all through it taking pictures and so on and so forth so and this is all collage all collage all that's closely. amazing that is amazing so it's basically wow. you know from photographs that i took and magazine people that i cut out and um that's the kind of work i haven't got a camera to take to walk through the house i was talking to my husband about possibly purchasing something like that because my entire house from floor to ceiling is covered with 
acrylic collages. I did about 32 collages during COVID to keep myself sane. Every day I was <laughs> in the studio working. Um, and so I have quite a lot of work to do, but it, it's up everywhere in the house. And so I, I, we saw what somebody did a tour like that with a camera they took and they walked around. So I'm thinking that maybe that would be the only You just thing. need a really, you just need an iPhone to do it. I mean, it's, it's not a problem an if iPhone. you got an iPhone. Yeah, I mean, the camera and the iPhone does a great job. I mean, I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max and I do all my videos. I do photography around the studio. I take stills. It does everything for me. Yeah, me too. Really, I'm not familiar with, you know, something. I'm on, like I'm on Google Pixel and I do, I do fine too using that. So it depends on what you're more comfortable with. Um, Mine's a Google Pixel, which is basically all a Google, you know? <laughs> I think any smartphone you could walk around yeah. and do it. And you mm -hmm. have to put it on video or something like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, the new it's pretty easy. Once you somebody shows you how to do it, it's very easy to do. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm going to have to get somebody younger <laughs> yeah. who's familiar with technology to be able to help me to do that because that's not my field at all. I mean, it's a, but that's. Yeah. It's, it work, it's like working on a car. The more you do something and, you know, the better you get at it. I used to say I could never work on a car and yet I, I could basically hook and unhook a, a battery. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the more I do something, the better I got. So it's the same thing. Well, Anything that seems out of reach. In my studio, which is on the other side of the house, I'm working on a new piece that's going to be fields of flowers with a lot of children in the, in the picking flowers. Wonderful. That's what I'm working on now. So That's what you work on now? That's what I'm working on now. So I have lots of little children in a file folder and I'm going to cut them all up and put them on. Well, it's been nice to see it in progress, but well, maybe we'll say that for, uh, um, by the way, the 2020, when we're all going insane, being stuck in the um, houses, that's when we started this whole online Zoom where we had people um, do workshops, we did um, demonstrations, we presentations and, um, and just, you know, salons. It yeah. was like everything. So we, if you stayed on top of it and always was joining in, you never felt like we would, um, you were alone because well, I'm, it, I'm a new member. I'm just yeah, but it was, but, and it's, uh, it's great. I, Welcome. I've been highly doing this, considering what's still going out in the world right now. And everybody I talk to is sick with COVID that we still need to continue in an online exhibition. <laughs> I guess yes. I, you know, suggestion. And I just came back from, as I said, Sarasota at the art center there and and they had a phenomenal you know at the now it was it's um i'm sorry it was the modian um art group in saint petersburg had a bookish event you had to do a, a creation in art based on a favorite book and you would name the book and name the author under your above your title and Wonderful. then it was, it was a fabulous show. There were about uh, 300 entries that I saw and they were very, very creative and clever. Like somebody did Little Women and they painted two women, two young girls, and that was their painting, but they based it, you know, with the inspiration of Little Women. And so- That's a fun, to, yeah, that's a fun so generic- a Very interesting way to get somebody to create new work. Exactly. With a theme like that. So and it gets your brain going. Right. And it was like the, the Grapes of Wrath. It was, you know, yeah. uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. In other words, even though the picture sometimes didn't even look like, you know, it related to it, like the, uh, the one with the crawdaddy. daddy. Um, yeah, but it's inspired. It's inspired you know, by it. And that's what the matter is. Inspired by it. And, and it even was abstract. They even had abstract paintings there. We um, were in a show three years ago with South Carolina based on the same thing where it was uh, specifically one author. Um, and then we all kind of created works that were um, inspired by his words and his writing. So same thing. Yeah. Okay. And I ask you a question. Uh, what type of glue do you use? Oh, that's a special uh, thing. Um, I took a fabulous workshop with one of the most uh, outstanding artists, Bruce Hollander. I don't know if anyone knows he's a collage artist. Oh, oh. And, and uh, he recommended yes, glue oh, yes, I yes. and that yes. is what i switched to and it is a miracle because when i used to use the medium 
you would put your work down and you couldn't budget. Once it went down, that was it. And so now with the yes glue, it's like, looks like Vaseline in a jar. It really, but, but you put it on your piece of paper or whatever your paper or, or material or whatever you're using and you can maneuver it mm -hmm. for a little bit before you know where you really want to put it and then you can set it and it's fabulous. So it's called yes, Y-E-S and most art stores, I, we got it even I think from Amazon online. So mm -hmm. wonderful. I have used it, yeah. And it's I'll also, try that. it doesn't get bumpy. It's, right, it's, right. Yeah. it's yeah. I've smoothed it out and it is fabulous. It really is Excellent. wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Anne. I really appreciate That's that. That's great. And yeah. um, we'll move on. And Muffy, would you like to share? Okay. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, oh, remember to start with your name and where your gallery is, where your studio is. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm Muffy Clark Gill, and I'm in Naples, Florida. Huh. I am doing exhibition chair work for NAWA, Florida chapter. And I am primarily a batik mixed media and photographer. So my batik work is wax and dye, resist on silk. I have recently been named a master silk painter by Silk Painters International. So like, for example, this work behind me is a batik on silk. Wow. And so it's one behind it. And then I've been experimenting I use my photography as a basis to do my composition for my, my work. So uh, I've been doing several different uh, series and I've been doing a water series and a clothesline series. And recently I took a workshop with Natalia Koroff from New York on how to repurpose plastic because I get so upset with how much plastic we're putting in the landfill and how it's wasting and everything seems to be coming in plastic so she taught a workshop on how to reuse some of these products to make artwork so i have been working on two projects the first one still has a ways to go and this is a photo collage of my brother when he um he recently passed away and they had for a celebration of life, they had this really cool photograph of him standing behind three pelicans because he used to, cl to uh, clean the pelican cages at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Wow. And I just thought, you know, it, let's experiment a little bit. So you can see this is, uh, this is a photo uh, dye sublimation transfer. I taught myself dye sublimation on a piece of cotton that I stitched to a felt background. All and layman, then, what does that mean? I'm sorry? All dye layman, sublimation? What is, yeah. Uh, it is basically most uh, reproductions of artwork on fabric material these days is done using a printer that uses dye sublimation inks and a thermal transfer. So I make the... Uh, I make the print, the thermal transfer print on dye sublimation paper, and I have a heat press. So okay. I, I render the heat press onto the fabric, and, and it heats, the, it creates gas which heats the ink nodules onto the fabric. So once I have that worked out, that was this part of it. The background here is stitched. And I've never been good with a sewing machine. Ever since high school, I had a problem <laughs> using a sewing machine. So I said, you know, this is the year where I'm going to do a lot of sewing. So I have a basic sewing machine I've had for years. And these are all uh, bags that we came with Blue Apron prepared meals. Mm -hmm. So I lined all these up and then I put a piece of plastic over it to hold them in place. And then I stitched them down. And then these are other pieces of plastic bags. I mean, this is a little nuts. I <clears throat> I had these two big sacks full of plastic wrappers and scraps that I'm mining for uh, colors. And it, you can see I've got one pelican done and it's it's been kind of nerve wracking. So I said, you know, I'm gonna put this one down a while and start with another one. So I had recently gone to the island of Dominica and I was photographing more clotheslines for my wash day series. 
And the wash day series is a body of work of me taking pictures and, and doing boutiques of clotheslines around the world. Because hmm. I've always just been fascinated. It's been a common element. Everybody has to hang their laundry up sooner or later. <laughs> So I decided this time around, I wanted to experiment and see how I could do it with one of my photos. So this is the base photo that I worked from. I put it into Photoshop and did a rasterized version of it. And then I blew it up and took it to uh, Kinko's, you know, a FedEx office to get my print. I lay this down and I made transfers. I made the tracing drawings of it. And now I'm sewing it onto a piece of uh, lining fabric. So I hand sewed all the clouds in the background. So they're all pieces of plastic newspaper bags. And then I machine sewed everything else. The bottom section is all uh, recycled uh, dryer Oh my, I can't think of the name. You know, the dryer things you put, you know, you, the stuff you put in the dryer. Uh, the um, fabric sheets. Yeah, the fabric sheets. And then the green, the bright yellow green came from a Norman Love chocolate bag. <laughs> and then that. in order to get the purposely. lettering the way I wanted, I um, made another dye sublimation print of the color version of the sign. So it has all the print on it. And then I machine stitched it in place. And then you can see last night, I just finished starting to build the clothesline. And this wow. has taken me over three weeks, but these are all different wrappers, plastics. Um, one is from Marshmallow Peeps, another one's from Brawny Paper Towels. It's just kind of a crazy thing. It another one's fun. from a bag of plantains. It is I just thought it'd be something different. Yeah, yeah. fun repurposing. I love it. Yeah, that. so I've been playing with that. And I've also um, been trying a new project where one of my friends has been reproducing her boutiques on clothing. And she was kind enough to share with me the printer. And I got my first piece yesterday to uh, Ooh. that came. So it comes really nice. It has my logo on the outside of the box. Oh. Is this, is this from um, the, the online place that does the clothing printing or something different? Some of them do it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of them that do it. But you open it up. Oh, fun. So you can see this is from one of my um, Japanese collage pieces. And you upload it and center it on the, on the form to see mm -hmm. how it works. And then they even went so far as to put the little logo on the inset of the shoe. Wonderful. So you can see. So I can't wait to try these on. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> I figured they'd be a good model, but I figure I can wear these with anything. But I figured I ordered for, uh, four shirts with different designs I've created and these shoes. How long does it and, take to turn around? Uh, it's about two and a half weeks. That's good. That's excellent. Yeah, these literally came shipped from China. Whoa. Okay. Directly to me. So yeah, I've been thinking yeah. of doing that. Maybe you'll motivate me to get my stuff to do. I wanted to do Well, there's too. several different ones. My sister-in-law uses Vita. Yeah, I've that also used I also have used Contrato. Yeah. But I've heard good know, things about one. Vita, but um and yours is Lulam Lulam Min or which one? Uh, no, this one is Printful. Printful. Okay, I never heard of that one. There's another yeah, I one had spoon flower. Spoon flower. Spoon flower, that's flower? another one too. But they, they do more just straight fabric and not yeah. um not clothing or accessories, yeah. that kind yeah. of thing. I hate shopping, so if I can put my own stuff on my clothes, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm actually wearing a shirt by one of my other boutique artist friends. It's made by the same company. And you know, it's so I like them because they're all over, huh? overall prints. They do a really not, they do each piece in sections like the collar, the sleeves, the back. So they have it even all the way across, which is makes right. it really special. Well, it's nice advertising for them. It's P R I N T F U L. Yeah. Excellent. And how do they wash? Like you wash it? Oh, I just throw it in a washing machine. It's fine. 
doesn't fade too much. Dry, I line dry all my clothes on a clothesline. I do not. Oh, yeah. 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 You should start doing that because I tried doing some um, uh, tie dyeing and stuff like that. And, you know, it does, it always fades. So mm -hmm. I totally get why you it all, Again, it all depends on the dyes that you use. I mean, if you want to lessen your fade and you're working with cotton, you want to use Prochen dyes like Pro Chemical or Dharma Trading. They sell those. But when I'm doing batik, I use Japanese acid dyes because acid dyes are made for silk. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, and I'm going to be teaching a two-day workshop at the Silk Painters Festival next month in Gatlinburg. So, Excellent. yeah, so your, your work's kind of incredible. Busy. And this new stuff is so <laughs> different than your batik, but so fun. It's well, fun I, like, I like to have a sense of humor in my work, too. So this I'll be working on this afternoon. <laughs> and, I, and I love the concept of repurposing art, you know, materials. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and your so, dedication anyway. to your brother was wonderful, too. That was well, lovely. I hope to get that done. You know, I, I want to, you know, it's just, he was a great recycler as well. So I figured he would totally improve. Of this. And it's good for the soul when you do something for somebody that's passed away that is like a memorial to them. It's mm -hmm. good for our soul as an artist. Mm -hmm. I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Wonderful. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> thank you. It's been wonderful. Um, okay. So thank you very much. And um, we'll move on to doing this alphabetically. So Randy. Hi, I'm Randy Globus. Uh, I'm in Key Biscayne at the moment. And uh, something I think that is um, similar between everybody that's presented so far is I, we're very kind of process in, intensive um, and also very repurposed because <laughs> stuff I've been doing uh, is both of those things. So um, I'll show you, uh, if, if you see this piece behind me, let me try to get a little closer. Um, I'm very, can you guys see that? Yes, mm -hmm. I see the, the, it looks like the um, bride and groom on the hooks. Which one are you showing us, all of them or? That big panel is one piece. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Of many paintings. Wow. And it's a sequential artwork. So it's like a giant size page of a comic book. Love it. Um, hmm. yeah. So, what I do in terms of process is I create the characters three-dimensionally. So I'm gonna uh, quickly, whoops, show you a couple of these guys. Like here's one of my skeletons. I made a, uh, a male and a female skeleton because the, the theme of that artwork is the, the devils, demons, and skeletons in my closet because I was sort of, whoops, during COVID exploring myself. You know, why, excuse me a second. Why I have made certain decisions in my life. And, um, and I've noticed, you know, I think during COVID, because we spend a lot of time alone, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection and looking back and thinking, you know, why have I, why did I decide that 20 years ago? <laughs> so um, I, it's been a lot of self-exploration, which is about what that piece is about. Here's uh, a couple of my characters. So what I do is like, I make these characters as sculpture, all from repurposed stuff. Oh, cool. And, and um, once I make the, the characters, I build a little set. So it's almost like a little theater set. And I bring the characters in that set into a dark room, like a closet, so I could control the lighting. And I take a lot of photos of um, 
hundreds of photos of them from different angles. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. Oh, that's I'm, really interesting. I'm not sure what you guys are seeing. Um, you're getting kind of close. So we're seeing just the one, the, the woman on the puppet um, holder. You're pretty close to just the one. When you get farther back, we can see more. So we see each one individually now, the bridegroom and the child okay. with the brushes. And now we're back. Okay. So that piece is actually 72 by 72. And um, what is the background? What is the material? Just paper? Watercolor paper? What? It's watercolor paper, but it's watercolor paper mounted on watercolor paper because I actually made more, there are more panels in that series, but I edited them out. And one of the things I found is it's very hard to get a piece this size uh, shown in a brick and mortar show. Yeah, especially now. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've sometimes when appropriate, I've entered individual panels and I just frame that panel and send it to a show. So that piece took me a year to do from, or more, maybe a year and a half from the point of creating the characters, making thumbnail sketches, doing the photography, you know, reading, making the compositions from the photography, making the paintings. You know, it's all very labor intensive. Like all you guys seem to have a lot of process. And so I did that. That was last year or a little more. And the story I'm working on now that's in progress is about, um, I had my dear old Aunt Rena, who was like 96, 97. She passed away last year. So I wanted to do a whole sequential piece about my visits with Aunt Rena. Uh -huh. um, so I'll just show you quickly one of the sets that I've created that'll be an element of all this. So let me, uh, I hope you'll be able to see it. Oh, wow. That's fun. Yeah, so that's her, I like the Jewish home. That's, that's her living room. And so, and everything in there I made from repurposed stuff. Oh. You know, the the chairs that they're sitting in. You know, if, if I get a delivery and it has like a funny shaped piece of foam in it, I mean, I save all that junk, like all you guys seem to save all this stuff. <laughs> we do, we do, we save, we hoard every single Yeah, day. exactly. I think, I think we should do an exhibition of <laughs> you creating art using recycled pieces. Oh, I absolutely. Well, obviously, all, all of us could do that easily. I think we all have. I have bins and bins and bins of, you know, clippings from magazines that I can't throw away. So I mm -hmm. we all have. Because you know you'll need it sometime. Right. Right. I My do. Aunt Rena character, I made her out of her clothing. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I make a lot of avatars. Uh, I call them avatars. I'll quickly just take you over to my little friends. Uh, <laughs> and you see these, all these guys? Oh, wow. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This is wonderful. Yeah. And wow. I, I make those characters they're usually based on people that I know. <laughs> and, and then I like I make them three dimensionally to use them as models and subject matter for painting. Wow. So that's that's what keeps me out of trouble. 
Yeah, all of us. That's great. And I've been really amazed by how many of your drawings you were doing with the opposite hand, or was it the same hand with the um, with your cast on? I couldn't tell, but they're incredible. Oh, you know, what was very interesting to me, and I, you know, now at age 66 to kind of realize that you're kind of ambidextrous. Um, I, I didn't really realize that before, but my mother was, but I had never really realized it. So when I broke my wrist, it really, really hurt. I, I couldn't use it. So I thought, well, let me try and see what I could do with my left hand. And I really, I had to do it really slowly, but I felt so much like my brain is driving my hand. And I was really uh, impressed that I could do what I could do lefty. Um, so I was pretty impressed by looking at it. <laughs> I was oh. surprised. It was excellent. I, I was surprised too. And if you haven't seen it, just go on to Facebook, everybody, and take a look at the, all the drawings. It's incredible. Yes, thanks. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you, going through recovering from this accident, uh, it's the artwork that keeps me going. Otherwise, I'd be so depressed. Don't be glad I share your pain. Oh, and all of us, I think, feel exactly the same way. Without that, we it would have been very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with all this COVID stuff, I mean, if we didn't have our artwork to kind of focus on, it would be like we'd go crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Excellent. So, um, okay. Your, your turn. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's my turn. Let me see if I, I don't know why I can't get myself to be, I'm going to pin me up here. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, I don't get to be focused on until I, I put myself as a pin. Um, anyway, I just wanted to um, first start out by telling you that Nor um, my name is Roberta Melman Ide, and I have been president of NAWA Florida for the last five years, oh, wow. and I will be stepping down to um, do more of the um, exhibitions work in Palm Beach County area that I'm in, and <clears throat> what else is there? Um, my studio and my um, is actually um, part of my home, but it's not actually in the house, it's outside, I could give you a quick show. And um, it's in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. And um, you're let me see. Neighbor. What's that? I said you're a near neighbor. We're really close. We're not that far. And I and, and Lake Worth Beach is known for being kind of artsy fartsy. And we have a lot of people here, musicians, artists. In fact, I picked the place because most of the people I knew or met that were artists or musicians all love this town. Um, normally, though, I do paintings. And I do use with recycled work. I, um, the piece behind me was um, done with sculpted paper, and um, I actually put it together and put it on a background. I used stones or paper or whatever in the background. This one is sculpted paper, and you had um, that one in Benita, right? What's that? Yeah. What's that yeah. one you had in Benita? Yeah, and and that one um, it's got the actually dry flowers. It's got wood. It's got um, sculpted paper, and there's actually a person in there, and it's called Escape into My Garden. But it's actually more sculpted. Um, you'll see it's more sculpted. I am known from my website, you'll see, as being just basically a fine artist that does painting. Um, you know, my, up my, wall, my stairwell here, every place in my house, like a gallery. And, um, but mostly I've always done nothing but painting. So, I mean, piece like this one. And, but I, when I have my own time, which is what I'm going to show you today. I prefer sculpting. So I'm going to show you really quickly uh, what I've done recently. Recently, I've been working on sculpture. When I have a chance during the summertime to do um, something I like, I love turning to sculpture. So I took, and I also repurposed. What I did is that I had done a, my art studio during Right before the pandemic um, hit, I had been designing a, my art studio on our home premise. Um, in there, 
I've been able to do some more work. So one of the things I did was um, I took some of the old pieces I had from when we did all of our you know, work over there and I did chicken wire to use for my sculpting, for my forms. And then um, let me just move this over a little bit. Oops, sorry. Let me see, I'm trying to figure out what, what I'm doing here. And, oh, there we go. So, um, yeah. So I take the forms and I can fill with the, the concrete, as you see here. And um, I mean, you, I don't know if you guys do sculpting like this, but this is all done in concrete because I started in New Jersey, by the way. I was from Morris County, New Jersey. Oh, really? For what town? Years. So, what, what town? Flanders. Yeah. Uh, Mount Flanders? Olive. Yeah, Mount oh, Olive. Oh, okay, because I'm from Mountain Lakes. Okay, excellent. Not too, yeah, I know where that is. Um, we ended yeah, up, my father used to have a, uh, used to run a Pfizer plant in Persephone. Oh, it, <laughs> there you go. Um, but we were, we were there. My husband worked out of the, the international trade zone there. And um, I was in and out of the city all the time. But, you know, again, just, um, I was doing mostly advertising and um, doing design, graphic design, and I do website design. And I still do the website design, but I stopped doing it for businesses. And I do it just for artists now and, and musicians. Um, anyway, um, to go on, I, yeah, I, I love the area. I love the Four Seasons. My husband hated it. So we made our way down here and that's where we are. So I, I wasn't functioning well because you can't do sculpture in a tiny room in the back of the house. It just doesn't work. So I really love having a, a place I could do both my painting and my sculpture. So um, <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> I'll show you the pictures. We, I worked on these two sculptures and what I needed it for is that we had created a, we have our pool. I created a fountain for the pool that had two pedestals and I wanted to um, put something on top of the pedestals and something that would kind of glow at night, you know, so I could light up. So <laughs> when I'm trying to hold up the hands, you can see what I did on that. I put the wire here to, to help support it because concrete does get heavy. And when I was up in New Jersey, the reason I worked in concrete was obvious because we have the, the thaw and the frost, you know, you have the icing and the freezing yeah. and then you have the thaw. Everything would break apart if it was done in, in um, any other medium. Chances are it would crack and wouldn't hold up. Concrete held up pretty well. In fact, I still have pieces here from there. When I came down here, totally different reason. I wanted a piece I could put outside and leave out there during our heavy storms. So when we have a heavy storm, most of these concrete pieces can withstand up to probably one or two um, hurricane you know, category. Pressed it up any more than that, but at least I'm not moving those out. You know, If I have to re, um, move, it's going to be lightweight. These are heavy. They're not going to go anywhere and they shouldn't have to go anywhere. So <laughs> when they started sagging and I'm trying to fix things and make sure there's no cracks and no weight from the, I use everything. Like I, I, I recycle materials just to support the weight because concrete does get heavy when you're working with it. And these aren't done with forms. These are done strictly by, like you saw, filling it up with the chicken wire. So this was a fountain that you were creating. It's not a fountain, it's, um, you'll see it at the end. It's just two pieces I wanted for this fountain I had already done. So it's in my, I want my courtyard, I want it to look ageless. Everybody here um, goes to the Miami look, you know, that all that white Miami look. And I have some white and these will be white, but I wanted them to look more ancient, like, like they would look the same in a thousand years, you know, if someone stumbled upon them. So, oh, and the stone is leftover stuff we have. We had concrete from, you know, it, it's cheap to buy concrete, but we had leftover stuff in our in our shed, um, all from the, um, like I said, repurposing like we do, just anything left over. And as I finish working on these guys, and I'll show you afterwards that. So I ended up covering them with a white mason that I had used for tiling. And I put, um, I have a, a pool place that will, they, they throw away all their tiles in the dumpster. And I said, oh, well, rather yeah. than throwing it all Ooh, away, <laughs> rather than throwing it away, I asked them if they would donate it to me. And they did. And I use them for workshops when I do um, tile workshops. And um, I use them for myself. I used, it wasn't that many pieces. I just wanted to create something that was, you know, jewelry, you know? So I created my jewelry for them, gave, um, gave them a little bit of a personality on their face. I mean, they're still dirty. I have to still clean them up. And um, you painted that white, Roberta? Yeah, well, not really. It's actually th at this point, it was white um, mason. It's uh, stuff you use like it's LFT. That's for outdoors. Don't forget, everything out here has to be protected from weather. And yeah. it's not stone. 
So it's got to be something that can actually withstand heavy storms ever, and it's near the pools. And we have a lot of salt air. I'm only, um, the intercoastal is like literally one house away. So I get a lot of salt. So if I don't have this protected somehow, so even with this, this is helps, but even with this, I had to make sure I painted on top of it um, with an outdoor paint that would protect it from all that salt in the air. I, I have a like kind of a dumb question. When you're using these kind of materials, how do you clean it up? Like, would I, I have a double catch? I have a double. Well, first of all, I have a double catch on my sink. So if anything goes in the sink, it's going to catch it. Remember how New York has that law that you have to catch everything that goes down the drain? They don't have that here. And as far as they're concerned, just let it flow. And I can't do that. So I have like two or three different layers of, of um, wire that I constantly changing. And it catches all the debris. And the only thing that really gets through it, once it leaves a little bit of a layer there, I leave it alone and it catches all that. And then I clean them every time I'm done with, a, um, I try not to clean them often because you don't want it to be open. So you want it to be a little bit closed up and then you can just clean it and whatever I can clean up, it goes into the bag and it ends up, you know, dust and, and, and particles, but it's not a lot as you think it is because literally I was filling up the holes <laughs> <laughs> the wiring, I literally fill it up with any debris. So all that debris that might be laying around, I could just gather it up, mix it a little bit with water and other stuff, and then I push it into the the screen. So the filler inside the inside of the the netting uh, inside the wire mesh is actually filled with a lot of junk. <laughs> How much do you think one of those pieces weighs? Well, I can lift the female. I could lift, and I'm I'm good at lifting about twenty pounds, twenty five pounds. I couldn't lift the male, so he's got to be close to 40. And, and I kept most of the weight in the lower back area and on the bottom so that the weight would actually, um, like I said, there's filler in there. There's, um, I have like trash and paper inside the head. <laughs> so, what, did so, you glue? what did you glue the uh, tiles on you with? Well, also the, sa the same LFT Mason. It's the uh, um, stuff you'd buy for tiling. And that's all I used on the outside. This is not the paint. This is actually just the... Um, mason work that it would be normally done to, to tie, um, adhere the tiles to it. So there she is. And I, I did a little bit of a face. I like her. Yeah, my, she's my favorite too. I, I, you're not supposed to pick, um, pick favorites, but I like her over him. My, my husband says he, um, the, the guy looks like he's kind of drumming. And I kept their he head high, so it could be either a hat or hair. Um, are you going to leave them that color or are you well, going to? They got white. You'll see why. Um, I had these. Now, I was going to do a bowl that was going to be concrete and do the whole thing. And, and I thought, well, if it, this breaks, this came off of the um, my ceiling. These were old light fixtures that I didn't use. Um, they were the cheap old ones that with incandescent lighting. And I couldn't use it even with the um, fluorescent light. It hurt my eyes. So I took these down. I glued on some um, of the wire, the smaller wire that's from screens that we had, put in there, started building up um, the tile pieces on the bottom, as you can see, and I glued them on there again to create weight. <laughs> Sorry, asthma. Anyway, <laughs> I use E6000 and try to keep my mask on, but it doesn't really help. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I used the glue, got, made sure it was a nice heavy base. And the reason for the heavy base, I was gonna, I put some red um, marbles on top. Those are loose. And I put on a solar light. That's the only thing I really paid that was new. Um, I paid for the solar puck lights. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, so that oh, way when that they- that looks neat. Oh, wow. That looks neat. So this is painted. The, the bowl is on her lap, and this is on my, my um, pedestal of the, um, the, the, the fountain. Here is he. My husband said it looks like he's digging into the pot or he was drumming it. He wasn't quite sure. But um, that's the, the, the one here. And it's more of a pouty face. It must look very cool lit up. I, I had a good time to doing these. I love the sculpture. And I and just like you all, I, I enjoy taking recycled parts and making something fun out of them. Very, the only very thing good. that had, the only thing I really paid for um, that was not recycled was the marbles and the puck. And 
great. This is the fountain. This is what it looks like. Oh, that's that that's fun. Yeah, wow. that's again. I wanted something fun, or something different. Um, you know, it, everybody would have put just a bowl on each side or something like that. And and if the glass breaks, you know what? I, I can always mold those out on sand and with the wire and create a bowl out of the stone, which is fine. But for the meantime, I want to recycle. Very clever. Really. Yeah. Very clever. So that's it. And at nighttime, oh, they can glow white. Or I can cover them up with a little bit of red and have her glow red. Um, my husband, <laughs> sorry, I didn't know he was in there. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, I always have my husband photobombing my stuff here. Okay, so anyway, um, that's really it. That's what I ended up with. So, and um, my studio, if I was to show you really quickly, because um, it was just finished like a couple of years ago and it got all that toxic stuff like the paint fumes and everything out of the house. Um, and Good, you know, with your husband in the picture, you see the scale. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, yeah. here's my outdoors. I don't know what you'll be able to see, but here, oops. Um, let me get sharing. Okay, here we go. So there it is. And you can barely see it in the bright light. I don't know how, can you guys see that? Uh, all that foliage um, protecting you from the road. From the what? From the road. Oh, no, that's actually a public access place, um, a walkway. I want to try to get control over it so we can protect it more. Um, my studio, I didn't show it from the distance, but my studio is here. And I built this one. My boys and my husband yeah. built the, um, the, the back to store my art. And I haven't started the latest piece because I've been busy with the um, with the sculpture. Oh, and my husband built. Yeah, um, I guess maybe. Oh, there. My husband built me the tables on rollers. I can move it, which helped because I could bring at least the items to the very front door before we move them. They are heavy. And I have a couple of easels so I could, you know, for classes. But here's some pieces that have to, different mixed medias. Um, so I kind of sculpt on the paper, but not like sculpting. I prefer sculpting. I just feel more comfortable in painting, but I enjoy the sculpting. And that's it. I got the whole, you know, background here that's all, you know, for storage and different art. And everywhere you see. <laughs> so that's about it. And oh, I designed the I studio myself. What's that? Yeah, I started as a sculptor. It's funny that I started as a sculptor in stone. Was for that for 20 years. So yeah. I know I used to love, love, love working with stone. My BFA is yeah. in sculpture. And you asked okay. about I wanted thing. to do sculpture, but my mother said you can't make a living being right. a sculptor. <laughs> yeah, but you can't make a living. They said it being an artist, but I beg to differ. Um, doing the website design and stuff is a way to help and then doing the rest of it. I've always enjoyed art. I can never see myself doing anything else but art. And I do play music. I play. I um, so there's my studio. I've it's always had my, my, employment based on art. Yeah. Rebecca, and I, my joke is, I, was just asked, I was just asked if somebody knew somebody who could do a design a website for somebody in women in the visual arts. If you don't mind, I'll pass your name on. If you yeah, that's my life. That's how you make a living so you could do your art, you know? And um, so that I will pass that on to the person who asked for somebody to do a website. So absolutely. I only do artists, so um, artists and musicians. Yeah, she's an artist. I do a flat rate and then um, the following maintenance is always based on how much they need me, you know? So okay, so I guess that's about it. Um, I stopped the sharing and, and it's been fun, it's been wonderful. And is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Okay. It's who's talking. It's, it's, it's broken up. Is that because um, I think my internet is kind of jumping because I moved between places. So yes. that, that was interesting. Now we recycle. All of us yeah. recycle. So.
Yeah, yeah. So like I said, we, we all seem to enjoy the whole concept of doing recycled work. And that's been a fun thing. And, it, and like I said, certain things are good for our soul. We do things, you know, more so for that reason than anything, just to make us feel good as, you know, humans. Anyway, is there anything else? I, here, I finally got my internet connection here. Um, my side was freezing up. I tried to connect. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Yeah. It's wonderful seeing you. And, and we got to speak longer because there were so few people. I'm okay with that. So take care and um, we'll talk again. And um, it's been a pleasure being uh, the president of NALA Florida, but I can't wait to look forward to doing some exhibition work, um, you know, here and in, in closer to home you know, in Palm Beach County. So that'll yeah, be fun I too. Me. Yeah. Okay. But well, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.